Hey there, I'm John Soskovich. You're watching the Farm Marketing Solutions YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna cover my hop yard soil test, the test I do at the beginning of every season. And I'm also gonna give you an introduction to the brewery and kind of my role in what the brewery does. Bom, bom. <laughs> Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna give you a brief tour of the inside of the brewery and the inside of our tasting room here on the farm. Before we start talking about beer, I want to talk about why we're going to take a soil test. I'm going to walk you through my process for taking a soil test and then show you what my results were from my hop yard for this year. So why take a soil test? And I promise I'll keep this quick because data or information is king. That is why. If you're going out into your farm, your yard, your garden, your whatever you're farming or doing outdoors, you want to know what steps to take next. If you're just shooting in the dark, have fun wasting your time and wasting your money. You want to collect information so you know what the next steps are to better grow a crop, manage your yard, manage your garden. So we do soil tests so we know what's happening in the soil, what our soil might need, and what it needs less of. And that information is going to affect how our plants grow and how our season turns out. So collecting this information and doing this kind of testing is super important for having a successful farm. Now, how do we take a soil test? I could take my time and try to draw it out on this silly whiteboard, but let's go out into my actual hop yard and I'll show you the process that I have used based off of the information from the internet uh, to collect my soil samples and send them out to the lab. Now walking out into the hop yard, I'm gonna wanna look in the areas where I'm actually growing plants. I'm not taking soil samples from the lanes, which I'm standing in at the moment. I wanna take a soil sample from around where the hops are growing. I know that sounds obvious, but I'm trying to cover my basis here. So I start by putting the spade in the ground on either side and taking out a big shovel full of dirt. I wanna create a hole that I can kind of scrape the side off of to get my sample. So in order to do that, I take some soil out and I'm working right next to where my hops are planted, but not necessarily in the compost that I pulled out or I put on last year. So I'm taking about a one inch sliver out and then I'm taking my other shovel and just kind of shaving off either side to give myself a core sample. Think of it if you put a, a pipe in the ground and you got a tube of dirt uh, about eight inches or so long, and that's what I'm looking to replicate with my two shovels. This is kind of the budget version of doing this. So what I have is my core sample right there, and what I'm gonna do is take my Ziploc bag out and take that dirt sample, that soil sample that has the first couple inches of topsoil as well as down to about eight or nine inches and fill up my baggie, uh, getting all of that soil in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you're just kind of just taking a soil sample. It's dirt in a bag, but uh, this is the process. So I'm covering it, you know, very exciting, very great. And then when you're done, just kick that dirt back in the hole because you don't want any holes in your hop yard, you know really skilled stuff here. Then I'm gonna go around and lather, rinse, repeat. You're just taking uh, core samples and adding them into that bag in different areas of the hop yard, which I'm gonna explain in just a second with the whiteboard, uh, but I'm sampling from all over the yard to give me a cumulative result uh, and then making sure that I label my bags properly because I'm gonna send them off to a lab and I want the results to be clear when they get back to me. Now I want soil samples from different parts of my yard and because I know this area typically performs very similar, this area traditionally has done fairly well and this area we've done some replanting here but it's this is a peak like our, our hill slopes up this way so I'm going to want three soil samples for this exercise. I'm going to update them later in the season but these are the three areas. So I'm going to walk around and get several different soil samples throughout this area so that I've got a good sampling of what that total area is like. Now, even in this one acre hop yard, there are different microclimates where the, the hill slopes down this way, this area is more wet and the soil is a little bit different. This area is a little richer. There used to be cattle on this farm and with the hill sloping up towards this corner, 
in my southeast corner, that cows would spend more time up here. That and water flows down the hill. So I had a little bit more nutrients in this area. Traditionally, the water flows towards this side and towards the back. This gets really wet and is not great soil. So that's how I chose my three areas to break down to do my soil test for this year. So what I did was collect all my samples from the hop yard and I sent them to the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. And for me in Connecticut, this was free to do. It was amazing. All I had to do was pay the shipping for United States Post Office to send the samples out for my hop yard. And what I got back is this piece of paper with all of the test results, a kind of basic test result for what my hop samples or my soil samples were. Now. I could go through all of this information and explain all this information and there's information on the back that talks about what everything means and how it all goes together, but I'm going to do one better. I'm going to share this for you on my website and I'm going to give you a URL right now, it's also below this video, where you can go and download the front and back of the sheet and see for yourself what my hop yard consists of. Now this is going to look like a jumble of letters. It's farmmarketingsolutions.com and then if you look for the resources section and under resources I have hops resources. I have this piece of paper scanned and downloadable for my 2018 hop yard information. Now if you're like, John, look, I, I'm on my phone or I just don't have time to go to your website right now, let me give you some of my key takeaways uh, that I see in regards to how my yard is going to perform this year and what I can do going forward. So one of the takeaways that I had was my pH. Now my pH, I've added lime in in the past. I actually added some in the spring and that's gonna be part of my next video for next week. We'll get there. Uh, but my pH has always been a little low. So adding lime in this year, I have a 5.7, a 6.0, and a 6.0. Now, hops kind of like a more neutral 7.0 right in the middle of the uh, that little pH scale there. And so I'm gonna need to add in some lime going forward to bring that pH up. And what a more balanced pH does with hops is allow them to take up and utilize more nutrients so that they grow a healthier plant and more flowers and things are more abundant. So I have some work to do in my pH department. Now what I've heard, and I'm no scientist here, if you have a really low pH and you start applying lime or some other amendments to bring the pH back up again, it'll go up really fast. And then once you hit the maybe mid sixes, uh, low to mid sixes, it takes a long time to reach closer to seven. So you'll go from say a five to a six really quickly but over time, it's gonna take you uh, more applications and more years to get that like last little bit here. It climbs slower towards the end. And it's just something to consider as you're reaching the optimal level of where your nutrients need to be in order for your plants to grow uh, the best. Now when it comes to phosphorus, my three samples, I had back a medium level of phosphorus, a high level, and a medium low level. Now phosphorus is important for strong seedlings and for good fruit and for colorful flowers and hops are a flower, so I want my phosphorus levels to be pretty optimal. Now I'm gonna see over the year, because I'm not gonna amend for this right away because I just don't have the time, but between the three areas of the yard, where are the plants performing the best and where do I get the best hop cones? Now seeing where they're medium high and medium low, now I may need to concentrate on the certain areas to bring up my phosphorus level so that I have optimal flower uh, production year to year so that I get a good harvest. And this is something to take into account when you're growing things that if your phosphorus levels are low, you're not gonna have strong seedlings, you're not gonna have good flowers, you're not gonna have color or colorful flowers and good fruiting. Um, so that is one of my takeaways and one of the things I'm gonna have to pay attention to going forward. And it's nice to have multiple samples so I can see, I know A, B, and C are slightly different. How do my yields uh, match up with those different areas of the hop yard? Now, one of the other big things that I have for this year is my nitrogen levels. Last winter, I spread three inches of compost on the entire hop yard, not on all the lanes that we drive down, but on the hop rows themselves and the hop plants themselves. So my nitrate levels were actually high and pretty decent uh, because they had that three inches of fresh compost and organic matter that were slowly seeping in to the plants over the winter. 
Now my ammonium nitrate or nitrogen levels are actually a little low and I have in my fertilizer grade and amount the types of fertilizer and the amount of fertilizer I should bring into my hop yard uh, are affected by the two levels that are presented here in my test. So let's say this is our hop yard. This is the ground right here. And these are our poles that we have in the hop yard. Bam, right there. Now every year the hops grow from the ground and twine up the coir that we hang in a V formation. They'll go from the ground up to the top of the trellis over the course of the season. That's a lot of growth. If you figure this is 18 feet, and we cut back the entire plant at the end of the season, they have to grow, they're perennial, growing from the ground to the top uh, over the course of the year. And then we cut the whole thing back. And that means they're gonna eat a lot. Now with 18 feet of growth per season, and then that leaves and uh, only the roots and rhizome is left, we're gonna need to feed those plants a lot so that we have optimal growth. They get up to the top of the trellis really quick and they start to put out those branches that put out the flowers, which is what we want for beer. So paying attention to our nitrogen levels will help get our plants up to the top, get the branches out, get those flowers made so that we can make that beer. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, what goes into a one acre trying to be organic hop yard, there are a lot of tasks throughout the season. And a lot of it is manual labor for us because there are certain sprays that we don't use. Um, but just going through the year, we have weeding, pruning, training, weeding, more weeding, mowing, spraying, obser observing the hop yard, looking for problems. That's a big one. Bam. Uh, harvesting, pruning the leaves on the bottom to increase airflow. We'll go over that in the future. More weeding because the weeding never stops amending using our soil test to make amendments and spread things spray things uh, and just do our best to grow the hop yard the best we can it is a never-ending task and it makes a lot of sense because we have a brewery and uh, it's that brewery that we're going to talk about now in this video now the brewery is located right in the middle of our 52 acre farm right at the top of the driveway we built that building about four years ago or so, and we've been in production for a little over three years. We had our three year anniversary of March of 2018. Whew, it is crazy to see how far we've come in just a short amount of time. Let's hop inside and take a peek. Welcome to the biggest, smallest room on the farm. It gets really packed in here really quickly, but this is awesome. I mean, that's a lot of stainless steel. We are producing about 2,400 barrels a year. That number kind of ebbs and flows with the years as, as time goes by, uh, but we're growing, which is great. We're distributing all over the Northeast, on the East Coast, some on the West Coast, and we've even sent beer as far as Europe. Now this YouTube channel is about agriculture, but because beer is incidental to agriculture and we have to source our ingredients from somewhere, you're gonna see more and more my life is taken up by the brewery and the things that I do with the beer process. Now the tasting room was the old dairy barn where the cows used to come in uh, out of the fields. And we converted it and opened it last year in 2017 and it's been awesome. We get people from all over. I give farm tours every weekend and we get to share what we do, where we do it, which is really cool. Now inside the tasting room, it's all about good vibes. I built this bar last spring using reclaimed materials all from scratch. Uh, it was a big project, but it was a lot of fun. We have barrels with beer aging in them. There's white wine, red wine, port barrels, whiskey barrels, bourbon barrels, and those uh, the beer that we're storing in there is picking up notes from those, and then we'll do special batch releases later on. And for you farmers, you'll recognize what our tap handles are uh, if you've ever worked in the dairy business. Now, like I said a minute ago, my time has been more and more consumed by the brewery because we're growing and expanding in that area, and that is just quite honestly, a lot of fun. So I'm gonna be talking about that in the episodes to come, how we're playing with the sliders a bit to make the whole operation move forward. Now next week on hops, we're gonna go over applying the lime to my hop yard. And there's a problem with that, but I ran out of board space. So I'll tell you right after I erase all this stuff. But I solved the problem, it worked really well, and it was stupid simple, uh, but it, w it, was, it was great. So, Lime application next week on hops. And now the next episode you're gonna see, which comes out next Wednesday, is this piglet feeder that I made. It was based off of an industrial design. It's adapted for my mobile situation. Easy to put together if you have a welder, uh, but I'm gonna walk you through the build process of my custom piglet feeder on the next episode. I had fun building it and I had fun making that episode. So I'm excited to show you guys that comes out next Wednesday. 
So here's my hot problem. I have my poles, that's what these things are. Sorry about the terrible diagram. But I have my poles and the hops are planted in between the poles. So if you were gonna spread lime on a traditional drop spreader or something, it, a drop spreader works like this. Where you put the lime in, sorry, illustrations, and then it falls out and it drops as you roll along. And then wheels turn and lime drops and you just tow it behind you. Now that works if you want to lime the middle of the row, but how are we going to get around the fact that we have poles without driving back and forth over the hops, crushing and then stunting the plants and causing compaction? I have a solution for that and I'm gonna show you it next week. Real quick, I just wanted to say thank you for putting up with me and having patience for the fact that I have, I seem to always have technical difficulties and I'm part of two other businesses that I'm trying to run or help run uh, all while making some videos for farm marketing solutions to share with you guys. Thanks for taking the time to watch this channel. I love and appreciate the work that I do, the time that you spend sharing it with me and then everything that goes into this community. Have an awesome day, enjoy your week, and until next time, I will see you out in the field.